the first frost of autumn cast crescent hollow in an icy glaze as Teresa Chambers gazed out the passenger window of their moving truck. Skeletal branches clutched at a leaden sky, their barren forms crowding close around the winding country road. Nervous, asked Michael from the driver's seat, glancing at her tense expression. Teresa smiled wanly, a bit. It's just so isolated out here. I know it's a big change from the city, but the town seemed friendly, and it was the only vacancy when I got the job at the university. His earnest brown eyes sought to reassure her. Give it a chance, sweetheart. A fresh start is what we need. Teresa sought solace in his optimism, but remained unsettled. Something about this remote New England township did not feel quite right. Perhaps it was the haunting emptiness of the surrounding forest, a vast expanse of dense pine and oak that seemed to swallow the ribbon of asphalt beneath the truck's tires. After another half hour, they reached the edge of Crescent Hollow proper. Quaint colonial homes and winding lanes told of a simpler time, yet an air of quiet neglect lingered. Few residents were seen on the crisp afternoon, though curtains twitched as they drove slowly through. At last, their new home came into view. A modest Victorian nestled back from the street, enclosed within a low picket fence. Ivy crept languidly up, weathered siding the color of oatmeal. Despite its unkempt charm, an oppressive stillness hung in the crystalline air, as if this place had lain abandoned for years, instead of recently vacated by its previous owners. Cozy, right? said Michael, misreading her apprehension as they pulled into the gravel drive. Let's get moved in before nightfall, then we can explore the town, meet the neighbors. After hours of labor, the sun dipped below folds of pine. Bathing the forest in shadow, Teresa lit a fire to drive out the autumn chill while Michael set about preparing a meal from their meager supplies. She peered through dusty windows at deepening gloom, beyond flowering ivy, feeling the weight of watchful eyes from the encroaching woods. A knock came just as they sat down to eat. On the porch stood a portly, smiling man with graying hair and kind green eyes. Welcome to Crescent Hollow, he said, doffing his cap. I'm Bartholomew Hawthorne. The wife and I saw your lights and thought we'd stop with a pie. Introduce ourselves properly. Impeccably polite, yet oddly formal. The Hawthorns conveyed their pleasure at new residence and regret at hermits. They had apparently become too busy with preparations, I'm afraid. But we simply must have you to the community feast tomorrow eve. A crescent hollow tradition. You'll love Beth's cooking. Teresa smiled warmly, despite lingering unease. We'd be honored. It will be nice to meet the neighbors. With a hearty chuckle, Bartholomew bid them good night, leaving the pie on the step. As the Hawthorne sedan crunched down the gravel drive, shadows seemed to writhe within the forest like some vast, sentient thing roused by their presence. Teresa shivered, suddenly longing for the amber glow within and Michael's comforting embrace. Here in this isolate place, night would bring unknown terrors creeping from the woods. The old clock in the foyer chimed midnight as Teresa descended the staircase, drawn from fitful dreams by an insidious presence. She felt closing in from the woods, hearing Michael's restless shifting from the bedroom. She clutched her shawl tight and peered through wavy panes, discerning only the suggestion of movement through plumes of her cold breath. As her eyes adjusted, strange wisps of blue-white light caught her attention beyond blackened trees. Drawn into the night without rational thought, she drifted toward the forest's edge as if in a waking dream. The lights beckoned, 
promising answers to the nameless dread haunting her troubled sleep. Parting skeletal branches, Teresa found herself within a murky glade alive with an unnatural glow. Dozens of robed figures stood chanting in flawless unison, their sibilant voices weaving an eldritch incantation that bypassed comprehension. Suspended upon runic symbols, scorched into the soil were gutted animal carcasses, entrails, spilling in visceral tangled heaps. At the circle's center stood Bartholomew Hawthorne, face uplifted ecstatically beneath antlered regalia, as if communing with phantoms swarming the mist. Shrouded boughs overhead, his flesh seemed to writhe, as if inhabited by crawling legions unseen. When his eyes snapped open to fix upon Teresa, they blazed with alien sentience that severed her from sanity's anchor. She turned to flee, yet found the glade's edge now sealed by robed figures advancing with unnatural swiftness. Their hands appeared bone-white talons in the gloomy miasma. Unearthly keenings tore from feral snarls as they closed in, madness dancing in filmed eyes. Within cowls tattered and... No closer, boomed Bartholomew. Thrusting out an arm, stayed only by unseen forces binding his coven. They froze, instantly yet continued low baying, like hounds catching scent of fleeing prey. Our guest is for the right alone. Take her to the mansion. Gently, children. His minions obeyed without question, seizing Teresa's limbs, yet bearing no physical form under robes that shifted as if alive. Their touch scorched her flesh, worse than flame, yet she found voice stolen, disconnected from any will to resist as they bore her into shadows beyond the glade. Waking with a start in plush furnishings, the morning sun caressing antique furnishings, lining a parlor larger than her family home. Memories of the nightmare, flooded back yet try as she might, Sanity offered no rational explanation. A creak from the foyer sent panic lancing through her. And with it, the grim awareness that escape from this estate may prove impossible. Teresa burst from the parlor, desperation lending speed to her footing as creaks and shuffling echoed ominously down the hall. She dared not call for help. Suspecting any reply would issue from jaws that craved her flesh. Rounding a corner, she slammed abruptly into a solid form and reeled back with a gasp, meeting Michael's wide eyes gazing down in equal shock and relief. Teresa, thank God, I thought. Teresa, thank God, I thought. His words trailed into a rasping breath, taking in her pallid features. We have to get out of here, now. Gripping hands, they stole noiselessly through a labyrinth of interconnecting rooms, senses straining for any sign of pursuit. Heavy velvet curtains blocked all exterior view, distorting spatial perception within these crammed confines. Her pulse throbbed in her ears, the only sound piercing an abyss of deafening silence hanging over the ominous stronghold. At last, Teresa spied narrow casement windows leading to an enclosed veranda, and beyond, freedom amid encroaching pines. But as she flung open the panes, a preternatural keening rose from everywhere at once, chilling her to the marrow. Dark shapes swarmed within the woods, weaving between bowls in a loping, frenzied congregation. Michael, look, she choked pointing a trembling finger. But he gazed only at her, pulling her firmly from the windowsill. Don't look at them. Come on. There has to be a back way out of here. They tore through more constricting hallways, the baying growing louder with each passing moment, as if the things in the forest sensed prey within their midst. A crashing boom shook the heavy oaken door at the hall's end just as Teresa and Michael threw their combined weight against it. 
toppling out into a tangled garden. The howls swelled into a crescendo behind them as they crashed headlong into the riot of hedges and overgrown statues. Thorns and foliage whipped their flesh, darkening the once pristine costume Teresa found herself still wearing from the night before. With a wrenching sob, she tore the constricting garment away, bearing scarlet cuts, crisscrossing her form. Michael seized her wrist, dragging her toward a crumbling brick wall barely visible through wild growth. Over there, come on. But as they broke from cover, the garden's boundary was no longer a low fence, but a sheer ten-foot rise, and from its summit silhouetted against boiling storm clouds, eyes burned down with malice from cowed forms, blocking their sole escape. Teresa backed against the wall, insensate terror driving rational thought from her mind. Those eyes peering through tattered black hoods held more than human malice. They were voids gazing into her soul from beyond the veil. Beside her, Michael raked the earth for any makeshift weapon against the coven's advance. But as they closed in with grasping talons extended, unearthly singing rent the air and stayed their approach. The song poured from no living throat, emanating from a mist seeping between ancient pines as if exhaled by the trees themselves. Figures coalesced within the fog, pale visages twisted in eternal agony, floating without substance or form. Their voices twined in a funereal dirge that chilled Teresa deeper than any winter gale. She knew suddenly what manner of ghosts dwelt in this accursed wood. Souls damned to wander its blighted glades for sins, and acted under the coven's rites. The spectral choir surrounded the newcomers, shielding them from the robed congregation with impossible grace. One apparition drifted before Teresa, meeting her gaze with bottomless black eyes, yet somehow communicating comfort through its anguished countenance, through its anguished countenance. Seeking to placate their fury, the shade said, without voice, Your lives shall be spared, though your souls remain forfeit, so long as you tread these haunted grounds. Flee while the sisterhood's glamour holds them at bay. Beyond the forest, you may yet find salvation. As one, the ghosts parted like mist, revealing a narrow deer trail, disappearing into gnarled undergrowth. Michael wasted no time, dragging Teresa into the brush even as the coven's inhuman howls rose in protest. Thorns and brambles tore at their flesh, but they pressed on, the phantom's sorrowful hymn fading behind and swiftly encroaching wall of firs. How long they fled blindly through that maze of ancient trees, evading unseen predators stirring among gnarled boles. Teresa could not say. Blood loss and shock reduced her senses to base animal instinct, guiding numb limbs after Michael's retreating form. All trace of the trail vanished, leaving only an oppressive canopy blocking any glimpse of sky to guide their steps. At last, her strength failed utterly, and darkness overtook her senses as she collapsed into the loam. The last thing perceiving before oblivion claimed her was Michael kneeling over her limp body, tears streaking the grime caked upon his face as he hugged her close and rocked, whispering pleas to any power that might deliver them from this living nightmare. As consciousness slowly returned, the oppressive darkness enveloping Teresa heightened her senses to an almost hallucinatory degree. She became acutely aware of the forest, breathing around her. Ancient trees grinding against one another, as if wrestling in their sleep. The floor of needles and leaves, rustling with some unseen perturbation. Teresa opened her eyes to find darkness still dominating her narrow field of vision. A faint blue glow emanated from somewhere beyond her boots the only indication she was still within the dense forest. 
She could hear Michael nearby, muttering prayers under his breath. Michael, her frail voice was barely audible over the sounds of the living wood. He scrambled to her side. Thank God, I thought. His words died in his throat as the blue light swelled with intensity, banishing the inky blackness. Teresa gasped, massive, glowing eyes were peering at them from between the tree trunks. Dozens of eyes regarding them with Leon, predatory interest. As her vision adjusted further, she began to perceive vague shapes moving beneath the eyes, enormous bulbous forms rippling with muscle and sinew. A guttural rumble shook the forest floor, emanating from one of the looming presences. It took a step forward, ancient roots creaking under the immense weight, revealing a twisted moss-covered form that towered above the tree line. Moss and bark clung to its corded muscles, hinting at a body carved from the very woods that birthed it. Teresa felt her sanity begin to slip as she beheld the abomination, all its nightmarish glory. It was an entity born of the deep forest's collective nightmares, summoned from some primeval place of slumber by the rituals enacted this Halloween night. The beast lowered its misshapen head, nostrils sniffing as two wild, glowing eyes focused on the helpless humans. It hungers, aching, eldritch voice echoed in the minds, words formed from ancient impulses rather than language. Its jaws began to open, releasing a palpable wave of fetid breath. In that moment, facing certain demi-seat the maw of a creature from beyond, Teresa knew only one thought, Teresa knew only one thought, that she would not die alone. She desperately sought Michael's hand, intertwining their fingers together as a final act of solace. Whatever abyss they now stared into, at least they would peer into it as one. Teresa squeezed her eyes shut, waiting for the monster's jagged jaws to rip her flesh. But instead, a thunderous crack split the air, followed by an anguished howl that rattled her bones. She opened her eyes to see the hulking beast reeling away, swiping a massive paw at something invisible, assailing it from the woods. A barrage of spectral arrows materialized from the mist, piercing ropey muscles with ethereal force. The ghosts had returned to shield Teresa and Michael once more, phantoms taking form amongst the gnarled bowls. With pitying moans, they herded the couple away from the entity's thrashing wrath. Its howls of primordial agony shaking the forest floor. The shades bore them at impossible speed through a blur of black bark and phosphorescent foliage, outpacing the abomination's rage. Fueled pursuit, branches seemed to part upon their passing as unnatural mists swirled in their wake. After what felt an eternity, the ghosts melted into the woods, leaving Teresa and Michael gasping amid a small hollow ringed by ancient sentinels. The howling grew ever more faint, receding into the primordial dark from which the entity had emerged. Teresa, Michael rasped, then broke into a fit of harsh coughing. His features were gaunt, face caked with sweat, eyes burning with fever. She tended him as best she could with meager resources scavenged from the wood, but knew he required proper care, and so their flight continued now slowed by his weakened state. They pushed on through the endless forest, shadows coalescing at the fringes of vision. A raven's mocking cause echoed from above as night fell once more. Lost and alone, hope seemed a fragile thing indeed in this unholy place. Then, through a break in the trees, Teresa spied flickering golden light through the veil of mist. A cabin long abandoned, yet still standing, renewed by this small mercy. She half carried Michael across the threshold of salvaged shelter and collapsed with him onto musty floorboards. Whether refuge or trap, 
At least for now, they could rest with four walls against the terrors stalking these haunted woods. But deep in her heart, Teresa knew this was only the beginning. At last, Michael's fever broke as dawn's pale light filtered through dust, clogged windows. Teresa sat vigil at his side, watching the lines of anguish fade from his youthful face. Sleep had evaded her this whole night, senses attuned to any disturbance, encroaching the tiny haven amid this nightmare realm. As Michael stirred with a weak groan, Teresa cradled him wordlessly. You'll be okay, she murmured, brushing damp hair from his eyes. Don't try to talk yet. Her smile held tears of relief that his ordeal had passed, for now at least. But a knot of dread remained clenched in her gut, knowing respite could only last so long in this place. She ventured outside to gather water from a trickling stream, cutting through scrub and rock. Reverential birdsong greeted the new day. Yet she sensed the wood's malice simmering beneath the idyllic veil. An otherworldly stillness hung over the grove, as though even insects and smaller lives dared not interrupt ancient forces slumbering within gnarled depths. Upon returning, Michael sat propped against the wall, sipping broth with a grimace. You should rest, she insisted gently, but he shook his head with a wan smile. I've done nothing but for days. It feels like... We need a plan, Teresa. A way out of this cursed forest. His tone conveyed grim certainty. Their ordeal had only begun. Maps. Supplies. Weapons. This place must hold some clue to surviving long enough to escape. As she tended the fire, Teresa's gaze fell upon weathered journals and sketches, stacked amid rubble. Curiosity overcame caution and there she found accounts of woodcutters and trappers who once called these wilds home. Their words spoke of esoteric dangers lurking where civilization's hold was weakest, but also of shelter and roots maintained down generations. Could one but find the courage to seek them out? Hope kindled anew in Teresa's breast at this small salvation. With care and luck, a way forward may yet present itself from the shadows of this haunting dominion. By dusk, Michael's strength returned enough to begin preparations under Teresa's wary gaze. A rough map was plotted based on the journals. Come morning, they would resume their flight, guided by the woodsman's trails and the lingering protection of this forest's sorrowful ghosts. For now, the solid walls and crackling fire kept deeper terrors at bay. But in her heart, Teresa knew their tribulation had only just begun. The morning sun rose pale and sullen through dense trees as Teresa and Michael stumbled southeast. Michael's strength had returned enough to support himself, though pain still etched his face. Their path wound through gnarled woodlands, older than human memory guided by spidery trails noted on their salvaged map. An uncanny stillness cloaked the forest. Not even birds disturbed branches heavy with dew. Teresa found herself straining to discern threats cloaked in the omnipresent mist, wreathing gnarled bowls. Now and then, she spied wispy forms drifting parallel through the wood, guarding their passage with mournful hymns barely rising above the carpet of needles. By noon, an oppressive fog descended, reducing visibility to mere feet. They pushed on blindly, hunger and exhaustion slowing their flight. Teresa began to despair, fearing they were doomed to wander these primal depths in a maddened daze till wasted away. Then from the murk arose the dirge of bull roars, signaling the coven's ritual summoning. A drumbeat pulsed from the mist, joined by voices, hissing invocations in lost tongues. Teresa recoiled, recognizing the Hawthorne estate looming unseen, but vastly close. 
they had circled back into the witch's domain without realizing. As the incantation swelled to a crescendo, the wood itself seemed to writhe in response. Trees groaned and roots snapped like brittle bone, twisted forms coalescing from root and loam. Teresa stifled a cry. Ghoulish entities were emerging wherever she looked, pulled into being by the sisters, blasphemous, working. Their anatomies flowed like oil, suggesting horrors beyond comprehension. Liquid black eyes fixed upon the intruders with primeval hunger. A thunderous cacophony ruptured the forest. The waking monsters were closing in from all sides as mist warped reality itself. The ghosts had vanished, abandoned, in this hour of possession. Teresa clutched Michael's arm, bolstering his flagging strength. We have to run. Every nerve sang an electric urge to flee. Yet all paths were obscured. They crashed blindly through a nightmare wood, alive with grotesque sentience, praying for any escape before unnatural limbs ensnared their flesh. A monstrous howl tore through boiling fog. Impossibly near, Teresa sensed a blur rushing at her back and screamed, hurling herself aside just as midnight talons slashed empty air. They rolled downhill through snapping undergrowth as more eldritch cries pursued. At the slope's bottom lay a slithering marsh, putrid vapors rising to mingle with the pall. Their pursuers seemed to fearfully avoid its miasmas. With a sob of relief, Teresa hauled Michael into its killing mire, sinking into foul depths, eager to swallow their forms. Only there, Submerged in the bog's rancid embrace, did the forest's malice finally conceal them from the coven's blasphemous glamour and the mad entities it birthed from the land itself. The marshes, noxious vapors deadened Teresa's senses. Yet beneath the surface, she heard unearthly shrieks as the woodland horrors scoured the tree line for prey. Michael's eyes were closed, still clinging weakly to life, despite the ordeal. She kicked deeper into the morass, praying its foul depths would hide them until the coven's malign influence waned. But the sucking ooze dragged them down, and inescapable graves low craving fresh corpses. Teresa kicked and thrashed, terror lending strength to exhausted limbs. At last, her flailing hands found purchase on a gnarled root bursting from the slime. With a sob, she hauled herself and Michael free of the quagmire's smothering kiss, collapsing on firmer ground beyond a sea of roiling muck. Their escape came just as the last of Michael's breath expired into her mouth in a rattling death rail. No, Teresa clasped his pallid form keen and nameless cry that rent the wood. His soul had passed beyond any succor while she stood helpless, paralyzed by a terror too long indulged. Rage and loss burned away reason, leaving only a howling beast in a woman's skin. She snatched up a fallen branch, hefting its solid weight as a feral snarling ripped from her throat. The coven would pay for their sins with blood. Let their dark rites summon what demons they will. She no longer feared their supernatural engines of torment and death. Teresa burst from cover with a berserker's fury, smashing aside choking vines. The forest seemed to part before her righteous wrath, decaying undergrowth sloughing away to reveal a winding game trail leading inexorably to the Hawthorne estate. Grizzly, howls still sounded distantly. Entities called forth by satanic means now turned prey in their master's absence. Light filtered ahead through worm, eaten doors, hanging askew from ancient hinges. Teresa crashed into a ruined ballroom alive with arcane symbols, scorched into blackened marble, now vacant, 
but charged with remaining sorceress Mayazamas. Her war cry shook, moldering rafters, as she charged into a maelstrom of score, settling that would see this unholy place raised to its foundations. Dawn's pale light bled through swirling remnants of the estate's occult miasmas as Teresa awoke amid charred ruins. Her rage had cleansed this profaned locale until only smoldering foundations remained, yet brought no solace. Ghosts still lingered amid the cindered skeletons of malformed trees, their singing fading into the wood on an imperceptible breeze. She found Michael's body amid the wreckage, laying him to rest beneath firs, keeping silent vigil since time immemorial. Tears flowed freely as she lit a bundle of kindling beside his peaceful form, flames soon consuming all traces of his earthly remains. Her vengeance was sated, yet left a hollow void an acute awareness of her ravaged soul remaining trapped within this blighted dominion. Exhausted, Teresa slumped against a bowed tree. Sleep took her in fitful tantrums, haunted by visions of scarlet rites and the coven's grim matriarch cackling amid a whirlwind of sheets. When awareness returned, eerie charcoal scripts had appeared etched upon the tree's ruination ancient verses in a tongue beyond man's ken, promising an escape if she but followed their mystic route. Hope stirred faintly once more. Gathering scant supplies, Teresa plunged into the primordial wood guided by the uncanny stanzas winding ever upward. Forest gave way to mist, shrouded foothills as the verses led her to a craggy notch overlooking a glade roiling with verdant life. Birdsong and buzzing fulfilled the hush, hanging over lower elevations. Civilization's reach was nigh. Teresa breathed deep the sweet mountain air, sensing malevolence's taint sloughing away with each step. She had endured trials to scar the soul, found inner strength through protecting what little remained of her heart. Though malice festered in the darkling deep, here in light of the risen sun, its corruption could not take root. Teresa emerged from the forest's shadow, basking in dawn's golden promise of survival. Behind lay a dominion of nightmares that would haunt her psyche's darkest corners for years to come. Yet ahead lay a road leading inevitably to new beginnings and a future shrouded in mystery, but ripe with hope once more. Her tribulation was over. A new life awaited beyond the trees. Dawn had come, and with it deliverance from the Festival of Souls.